in the right of the video with you. I didn't hear everything this Marine Jim Martin was saying about me. Was it complimentary? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I couldn't hear out there. I never know what he's going to say about me. By the way, take a look at this guy, and you'll see why everywhere he goes, people think he's Ted Turner. <laughs> Literally. Anyway, I'm the check is in the mail. The check's in the mail, sure. I uh, I understand I'm following my daughter Debbie, yeah. who was here. Is that right? Did you some of you hear her sing? Yes. You forget. <laughs> Have you forgotten? Well, <laughs> I uh, I was told I was coming to an old folks face. I don't see any old folks. What happened? I, uh, I am representing 60 plus, the conservative uh, senior activist organization that Jim Martin has been running for, what, 25 years? Is it 20, 20 years. And uh, some 15 years ago, when I came out of the closet and uh, acknowledged, acknowledged that I am a senior, as I have been now for quite some time, he asked if I would join forces and, and speak on behalf of seniors across this country. And I said, of course I would, because uh, uh, I am descended from two seniors, my mom and my dad, very special people in my lives. And in fact, I, I wrote out in the interest of trying to be succinct and, uh, and fairly brief, I wrote out what I wanted to say today and so if, if I may, I will uh, read at least some of it. Maybe not all of it, but some of it. And I wanted to say first, I am not a politician. Can I hear uh, an amen? amen. <laughs> I'm not running for anything. Amen. Amen. I'm just an American like you. Amen. amen. I'm a citizen. I'm exercising a freedom it cost a lot of people their fortunes, their lives, and their sacred honor. It's a little thing called free speech. I'm here to speak my mind, to express my concerns for my country, and yes, in some cases, to be openly critical of our current elected leaders, and our government in Washington. For the sake of the country I love, I want to see a lot of those guys go home fast. <laughs> now, not everybody agrees, I understand. A lot of folks would maybe disagree with me, but as I say, it's a free country and I'm here to speak my mind and you can weigh what I have to say as I would weigh what you would say to me. I am not an economist either, but I did learn two plus two equals four in the second grade. And I know you cannot keep spending money that you don't have. I was born in Jacksonville here in Florida. I was raised in Nashville, Tennessee, the son of an architect from the University of Florida, who slowly built a contracting, a building company. We couldn't afford a car until I was in the eighth grade. Uh, our family, mom and daddy, my brother Nick and me and our two sisters, went everywhere in daddy's Boone Contracting Company pickup truck. Daddy, with his own hands, because he was an architect and a builder, made a wooden bench for my brother Nick and me to sit on in the back of that pickup truck. And Margie and Judy, my sister, squeezed into the little cab with mom and daddy. Now, at first, when I was little, it was fun. But then, from about the fifth grade on, I confessed to being increasingly embarrassed for my friends to see me riding in the back of a pickup truck. And I guess you can empathize, but I begged my father, my daddy, Daddy, can't we get just any kind of a car, anything, an old used car, anything with a top on it, all of my friends? And he stopped me. He said, son, we don't have the money right now. When I make enough to keep you kids and mama under a roof with food on the table and clothes on your backs and can still buy a car, I will, but not till then. When he finally put the money together, he did bring home a shiny, black two-door Chevrolet. It had a back seat. It had roll-down windows, a, 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 a roof over the whole thing, and a heater. There was no radio. There were no extras. 
I thought that was the most beautiful car I had ever seen. Now I have owned a Ferrari, a couple of Cadillacs and Rolls Royces and Jaguars since then, but nothing has ever thrilled me like that two-door Chevy. Why am I telling you this? Well, I learned what most of you know, that when you live within your means and you have love in your home, you appreciate what you have. You appreciate the little things, don't you? And then when you do reach the place where you can afford more, when you can pay for it, it's heavenly. But if you start living beyond your means, when you borrow more than you may be able to pay, just so you can indulge in what others have, and then the bill comes due that you cannot pay, and you may lose everything, that is hell. Are you aware that this administration due to the trillions of dollars of new indebtedness, stimulus packages and all these things, has added $150,000 debt on you and every member of your family in just the last three and a half years? Because that debt must be paid and it can only be paid by us taxpayers. This president has announced his plans to pour four to 10 times that much on each of us if he is reelected, his own expressed plans. He says, hey, it's the American thing to do. Everybody has to have government health care, whether they want it or not. And don't worry, it'll only add 10 trillion to our national debt, and it'll pay for itself and actually reduce itself as it goes along. I've got it all planned out. Don't worry about it. Trust me. Anybody here invest with Bernie Madoff? Does that kind of thinking sound familiar? And e even he, that's Madoff, didn't have a Ben Bernanke with the government printing press, is able to print billions and billions of pieces of paper with absolutely nothing to back them but unpayable debt. And to supposedly add stimulus to the economy. Well, if you look at television and you read the papers, and I know you do, then you know that that stimulus package has not done what it he said it would do. In fact, if the health care bill that he did promote and got passed over the objections of most seniors, the majority of seniors did express their, their uh, resistance to the bill as it was presented. Not that we don't need, we at 60 plus are committed to saving Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Those have been our goals from the beginning, haven't they, Jim? And also, we want to abolish the death tax, that is the estate tax, and at the end of this year, if this man is reelected, the estate tax will increase to what, 54%? So that, to me, that is robbery. That's taking from you what you did put aside and save after you paid taxes, and now if you have the bad judgment to die, the government steps in and takes over half of what you had saved and says thank you for that and takes it away. You may have to sell a house, a business, or literally go bankrupt just to pay the tax for dying. That does not seem like a good plan. And I, I'm gonna close with this, and I wanna sing you a song that I've written. If, uh, if you have $100,000, to think about this simple analogy, you have $100,000 in your IRA or if uh, somebody leaves you $100,000 and, and you want to make sure that it is invested wisely and protected and hopefully grow some cautiously, conservatively, and you have to choose between two money managers for your $100,000, would you choose Barack Obama or Mitt Romney, a man who has run businesses and knows how to make money and to save money? The other man has never run a business, never had a payroll, has had no experience whatsoever in, in managing economies, but he is somehow man he is managing, or mismanaging, I think, the greatest economy in the world, and we're adding trillions of dollars of debt that cannot be paid realistically. So, those are problems, but we are Americans. We are citizens. We can vote. We can elect leaders to do the job for us that we need done. 
And I know that you, though you may not be working at a regular day-to-day -day job, you have this, you have your brain, you have this, you have your heart, you have judgment, you have experience. You can look at the facts and make wise decisions. And we're urging you to vote. If you never voted conservative in your life, the whole idea of con conservative is conserving what we have and not seeing it all dissipate. But the main thing is let's be participants. Let's vote. Let's be good citizens. Let's register. If you haven't registered, cast your vote. You say, well, I don't like either one of them. Well, you're going to get one of them. So if you <laughs> either vote for the one that you dislike least, <laughs> because if you don't, you are voting for the one you dislike most by not voting. And if you vote for the one you dislike least, you're canceling out a vote for the one you dislike most. So keep that in mind, because this is our freedom, this is the liberty that we've been given under our country.